Fear. Anger. Bitterness. Why are you taking away my future? That was the first 10 seconds after being diagnosed with Parkinson's disease. The next few moments were the most important moments of my life. That's when courage, resolve, and determination all kicked in. Now I'm going to take you on a little journey today. In order to do that, I need to go back a little first to what I call D-Day. D-Day 1. Datscan Day. Datscan? I hear you all ask. What's a Datscanner? Well, without trying to get too technical, and without trying to go into too much jargon and medical information, a dart scanner is a large metal donut which you get your head stuffed into and it reads your brain. There are some precursors to that. You arrive in the morning and you're made radioactive. The second thing they do is say, don't go near any children. So, you know, that was the, that was the morning's work. Then in the afternoon, you get your head into the donut. Again, I'm sorry if it's too much jargon for you there. Into the donut, and the staff scuttle off to safety. <laughs> Closing the large metal door behind them, saying, we'll be back in half an hour, just relax. <laughs> Aye, right. Just relax. So I did. And I'll tell you why I did relax. I relaxed because when I was at the GP for the first session with a little bit of a shake, he said, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll get you a DAT scan, because that will rule out Parkinson's. Excellent, says I. Let's rule it out then. So there I am for half an hour ruling out Parkinson's. In fact, if I'm honest, the half an hour passed quite quickly because I had 40 winks. Well, I wasn't worried because my GP had told me, do not worry. Rule forward, back to the fear, back to the anger, back to the bitterness. D-Day 2, in there with the doctor. Diagnosis. There's a weird way you sit in a GP surgery these days. Sort of almost looking at him, but almost not. With him, but you're not. It's not quite across, but there's no gap. So he sat very close to me and looked at his screen. He looked at his notes. He looked at his screen again. Then he looked at his notes. He looked at his screen. I thought, oh God, get on with it. And he did. Eventually he turned and looked at me. I said, John, it's Parkinson's, fear, anger, bitterness. Then the moment of truth hit me. I have Parkinson's, but Parkinson's does not have me. Write that down. That's what I thought. I'll write it down. Of course, I couldn't write it down. My hand was shaking too much. So that was a stupid idea. But I thought I'll remember it, because it's a cracker. <laughs> we move swiftly on from diagnosis day to day three of my D-days. Diagnosis day is finished. Next up is D-day three. Determination day. And determination day, let me just tell you, wasn't that day, and it isn't tomorrow, it's every day. But what was I determined to do? That I didn't know. That was a quiz. What was I going to do with all this newfound determination? Actually, I should be thankful for Parkinson's, because before I was a right lazy sod. <laughs> After Parkinson's came, I became focused. I became determined. I became willing to try to get from here 
to over there. So, picture in your minds, if you will, a map of the UK. Down here is Cornwall, Lizard Point, up here in the shaky north, thank you, is John O'Groats. Now, some route planning. Draw a straight line. That's it. You've got my route. I walked from Land's End to John O'Groats in a straight line. It took a lot of planning, other than the obvious route planning, which was pretty darn easy. The planning was great fun, but really, it was more the logistics than actually anything else that was, that were, were you, had to, you had to really work on the logistics more than anything else. Everything else fell into place. But the walk itself, I'm quite honest about this. The walk itself was all about me. Very much so, I dressed it up. I said, well, perhaps it's about fundraising. Perhaps it's about raising awareness of young onset Parkinson's. Perhaps it's about the challenge itself. One man against the odds. Loads of rubbish. It was all about me. <laughs> until, until I met one person. But we'll come to him later. I'm going to insert something here. Uh, in order to keep me going, I need to use an app which helps me move. It gives me a metronome beat and I walk. I'll just, will I do it? Beep, 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 beep. 10 minutes of that. I'll cut it down to three seconds. I even need Rupinerol. Stops me shaking. But yeah, I did take it today, honestly. And Volterol for my knees because they get quite swollen if I walk too far in any given day. Some of you may have heard the phrase, some of you may not. It's all to do a little bit of tex and drugs and Volterol. <laughs> I promise you that is the last bad pun I'll do. Uh, and probably the last good one as well. So tex and drugs and Volterol. And, and it was that, it was getting into rhythm. It was getting into rhythm of pounding the miles out. Get in there, get in there, get there. Get to the Isle of Man. And that's where things changed. And they changed entirely because I met this one person. He shuffled up to me on Douglas Pier, or the promenade, I suppose it's called. And I didn't think he would make it from here to there, far less from here to there. His name was Rob Farrer. And Rob won't mind me speaking about him today, mainly because he's not here. So Rob came over wearing a flat cap, yellow t-shirt, and mumbled something to me. I couldn't understand a word he said. Parkinson's for you. Couldn't hear a word. But Rob had actually said, can I walk with you a bit today? And to be fair to the fellow, he must be a good guy, because round his neck was a large kitchen tray with a picture of me in it. All about me, I was delighted. Rob is my absolute solid hero. I'm going to tell you a story about Rob. And if I cry in the middle of it, just kind of edit that bit out. You know, don't want to, be, don't want to appear um, emotional at all. But Rob, walked with me that day. We had, we'd arranged to walk about a mile and a half until we got to the, this is a very Bear Grylls moment by the way, until we got to the first stop which was a tea shop <laughs> where we had tea and scones. And some of us had a little bit of chocolate brownie as well. Well, what else could you do with it? Rob then mumbled something else to me which I didn't quite catch. It was, I'm going to walk the rest of the way with you today. I said, that's fine, Rob. No problem at all, mate. 
We'll see you later. He says, no, no, I'm going to walk with you today. Well, that guy had only ever walked a mile, perhaps a mile and a half, in any given day in the previous two years. That day, he walked 12 miles. And can I say he walked them in his Sunday best shoes? Now, that's a good story about Rob's determination. But what happened the next morning floored me, stunned me. Rob's wife phoned. Rob, sorry, can't be with you today, John. Oh, I. I'm thinking his feet will be in tatters. Some of the best shoes are probably not going to be used for church on Sunday either. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, he's apologising. I'm thinking he doesn't need to apologise. The guy's done ten times the amount that he's done just yesterday for no good reason. Yeah, he wants to walk with you this afternoon from the mill. I'll be honest, I had no idea where the mill was. But I started to think, Rob wants to walk this afternoon. Good God. He'd walked ten times the amount he'd ever walked yesterday. And now he's coming out in the afternoon after having had a, a whole morning's rest. Well, he did come out, and he did walk that last six miles. It should only have been five, but he took a detour. He made me go down to the beach to a prehistoric forest near Point of Air in the Isle of Man. I think that's nuts. You'd think he'd want to get over the walking. So there's Rob. He's my absolute, absolute hero. I would not have finished that walk without him. It's just impossible. He made me change. All about me. Well, mostly me. But not anymore. Somehow something had happened on the Isle Man. Whether I wanted it or not, people were interested in this walk. People were being inspired by the walk. It's totally not what I set out to do. I set out to get my ego stroked. Change. Lots of change. Walking down the slipway by John O'Groats, there were a lot of thoughts going through my head. I'd had a month of walking towards 20 miles a day. And it was time for the line to finish. I'd stuck to that line. And it just was, became a living, breathing thing. And this was the end. This was the last few steps. I had my hands behind my head as I walked down the, down the slipway. Lots of thoughts tumbled into my head. And one of them was Rob Farrer. Would I finish that walk without Rob? I actually don't think I would, because there was too many hard times. Too, ma too many times when it was just too far to go to reach the goal that day, until that man's Sunday best shoes came into my mind. Rob, thank you. You're my absolute hero. Enough of Rob Farrer. I'm sure you guys don't know him, but I'd love you to meet him. Maybe one day, go to the Isle of Man, he'll be there, walking. He changed it. He gave me my sense of duty. I didn't know about this sense of duty. But it came from inside. And it became something I had to do. I had to do more of it. I had to do more talking about Parkinson's. Now, you'll be pleased to hear. You'll be very pleased to hear that normally... I speak to a group of people who don't know anything about Parkinson's, and I've been invited there to tell them. And I spend 20 minutes, half an hour, in one group in Aberdeen, they wanted an hour. Can you believe it? 15 minutes is great. TED Talk has it right. An hour of speaking about Parkinson's. So I had a full chance to tell them about the sleepiness, inappropriate tiredness, the drooling, the shaking, the stiffness, the pain, the voice that goes. I also had a chance to tell them about the urgency to go to the toilet. At least I think that's Parkinson's, although at this precise moment I'm not too sure. But I won't bore you with all that. In fact, I'll tell you about what I'm going to do next. Don't know if anybody of you watch darts, but there's a guy sports presenter, Dave Clark, and he contacted me 
to say, how do you go about setting out to do a long walk? Unlike everything else, it's with a small step. And luckily he didn't punch me when I gave him that answer. So we're going to walk coast to coast. We're going to walk across, across the UK instead of up and down it, which I thought was great. It turns out it's about 200 miles. I'll never learn. I'll never learn. But there's Rob in the back of my head saying, do it. Do it. I'm not going to walk further. I'm not going to walk faster. But with Rob's help and with Rob's inspiration, I'm going to walk one hell of a lot smarter. And that's what I'll leave you today. Walk smarter. Thank you.